welcome to the to another di edition of the Josh Hose Show. I'm your host, Allison Dietrich. With me is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Josh Hose. We want to once again thank our season-long sponsor, Reliable Heating and Cooling. Coach, welcome to the show. I'm excited to be here with you, Allison. Coach, your Tigers are now 10-3 after picking up another victory, beating Cleveland Max Hayes at home this past Saturday night, 79-39. to Tell us more about that big win. Well, you know, Max Hayes was a team we hadn't played before, so I think they played him the year before I was here. Um, and Coach Cruz had him on the schedule, and um, we, you know, we were being independent. We always look to add teams. Uh, you know, I try to get ahead of the schedule in March, April, try to get things done. And as our schedule was shaping up, we had this big gap. We had like five games in eight days, and then we had this long gap that you know we needed a game. And so I was really looking for a mid-January game, and that many teams were uh, free. So uh, Max Hayes reached out, and they could play that weekend. And uh, so you know we, we got them on the schedule. Um, they're, they're struggling a little bit right now. Uh, their team isn't playing you know great, and and you know it was a good opportunity for our kids to go out and you know kind of fine tune some things that we needed to clean up after a, a tough loss against the Lions and. Uh, the kids played really well and, uh, you know, got a nice W, got a lot of guys in. I think 11 out of 13 guys scored in that game and, uh, you know, really got to see uh, some guys display some things that, uh, you know, have been doing in practice that they necessarily haven't been able to do in games. And, uh, like I said, it was a good win for our guys to get back on track as we get into a tough stretch of our, our season. That home game against Max Hayes was also a military appreciation night. Describe for us some of the happenings that night that made it a special evening. Well, first of all, it was a special evening because you guys did the game. That was always a uh, you know, big thing for our kids. I said, last year we didn't play well. When WHS TV did our, our, our game, we didn't play very well against Boardman. So I said, you know, and that's things on YouTube now. You know, every time it comes up my feed, uh, when I go to turn on accent, I see that thing on there, and it makes me mad. So I told our guys right from the court, like, hey, let's not stink tonight, and uh, let's play well. So, um, but with military appreciation, it was really awesome for us to be able to, to, to honor our military members, uh, you know, current serving and uh, uh, former military members. And uh, you got these really cool uniforms from the Ohio National Guard that, uh, you know, uh, had a little camouflage on them, uh, different numbers. Now, you know, it was different for guys because they, they couldn't match up their normal numbers, and, and athletes are usually superstitious. So that, that was a challenge for our guys to kind of get out of their comfort zones and do that. Uh, but it was worth the sacrifice. We, we talked to our guys and said, listen, you know, this is the least sacrifice we can do. Do, uh, for what our, our military members do for us. So uh, our guys are really awesome with it. And uh, um, uh, Sergeant Kyle was there. I, I don't know his last name offhand, but he, he's in the building. Uh, so he's really excited to be able to share those uniforms with us. And uh, any any active duty or former military member got in for free. Uh, so first time we did this, something we want to continue to grow. I know football's done it the past couple of years, so uh, kind of piggybacking off of what they're doing. And then uh, you know we want to continue to you know build on that, like I said, and get a little bit bigger crowd and some of the service members there. Uh, but we were the first team to get to wear those those special uh, edition uniforms, so we were really excited to to be able to be the first team to do that. You also have your players actively involved in several community service projects each year. Who are you and your players assisting the season, and why is this community involvement important to you? Well, community service became a big part of what we were talking about last year. It's it's something we weren't doing a good job of the first couple of years. You know, we weren't doing enough of it. So um, we started looking for out, out, outreach programs and different things we could do to help out. And, uh, you know, last year was the first year we did the uh, food drive, helping out with uh, Amanda Williamson's, uh, you know, food drive she does around Christmas time, getting uh, uh, food bags packed for families in our, our community that need help around the holidays. And uh, uh, Amanda passed away in the... Uh, I think this the spring or uh, early summer. I can't remember exactly when, but uh, it was kind of shocking to all of us. And uh, the opportunity was still there to, to come and help. But this year, they had a ton of food. Uh, and they did a food drive in her honor, and we had a ton of food to pack. So our, our guys uh, helped out at the uh, administrative offices packing food bags again this year. And I think each family got three or four bags. And, and it's the most food they've ever had. It was really awesome to be able to do that. And, uh you know, give back to, you know, there's a lot of projects you can do, but to be able to give back to our community, people here, and we talk to guys like, you know, there could be families of the people in your classrooms that are, are benefiting from this, and it's really important to be able to do that and, uh, and help out. So that was a pretty awesome uh, opportunity to be able to do that. And, uh, and I think last year we helped at the YMCA with a little bit of a, 
uh, cleanup project. Um, you know, we, we just trying to look for different things to do. We've cleaned the stadium, which is more of a self-serving project. Uh, the guys donate their time, but it goes back to our program. Uh, but just I think it's good for our guys to be able to, to give back uh, to to a community that gives them very much, and uh, you know, f- feed the teams and uh, sponsorships and different things. You know, it's it's good to give back and and not always receive. In, in a moment, we'll meet a Tiger player, but first this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. Everything that goes into a Linux system is engineered for absolute comfort, like the parts that create your perfect temperature and humidity, or the parts that purify the air. Together, all these parts save you up to half off your heating and cooling bills. And there are few things more comforting than that. The future of home comfort is here now at Reliable Heating and Cooling. Get the latest innovation and technology at Reliable. Linux. Innovation never felt so good. Thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling, and welcome back to the Josh Hose Show. Our Tiger player joining us this week is junior guard Chris Knight. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Chris, how old were you when you first learned the game, and do you remember who taught it to you? I was around three years old when I started playing the game of basketball. I've had uh, many different mentors in my life, like my dad, my brother, recently Eric McCullum. He's been uh, helping me out with that. You know, he plays overseas and he's been a real, real model towards me. And what areas of your game did you work on the most since the the end of last season? Um, You know, really my defense and bringing in defensive intensity, you know, that was a big thing my freshman year. Um, trying to get me on the court more, and I think I've improved in that. Describe for us your role on this year's team and how it may be different from last year. Um, really just um, coming out the game hot, you know, trying to provide for my teammates and myself and just trying to bring the defensive intensity, like I said. This Tiger team is off to a great start. What is this team doing well that is leading to a lot of wins so far this season? I think, you know, coming together as a team, you know, we did a lot of off-season work together. You know, like, like Coach O said, like the food drive, that brought us together and that really helped us become like more of a team. Do you have a nickname? No, I do not, no. And finally, tell us something about Coach Hose that maybe a lot of people don't know about him. Coach Hose is, he has a lot of good jokes. He's very funny off the court, and that's, that's the funny thing about him. You know, you never know what he's going to say with the jokes, and that's funny. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Coach Hose will rejoin the show when we return after this timeout. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're gonna give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinary visits, preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys, But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information. Welcome back to the Josh Hose Show. Coach, we just spoke it with junior guard Chris Knight in our last segment. Besides being your team's leading scorer, tell us more about how Chris impacts this team. Well, Chris is our, our leading scorer. Um, he's also one of our top human beings on our team. He is a great kid that uh, does all the right things, you know, in the hallways, in the community. Um, 
he's just a great kid that way. He's, he's a great student. Uh, he works his, his rear end off in the off season, you know, before practice. He does all the extra stuff. And so now he's seen the fruits of those labors, you know, and, and putting the actual time in and training in. Uh, he, he scores, you know, really well. He's shooting it really effectively. Uh, I think uh, looking last week, he was shooting at like a 62% effective field goal percentage. Uh, for those that don't know, that's really good for any player, let alone a, a perimeter player. So he's shooting it very efficiently and, and for us. And um, I can't say enough about what he does to our team, leading us by example. And then, you know, obviously in, in the scoring column as well helps. But uh, yeah, he's just a great all around kid. And, um, you know, I just, I have a lot of teachers that had him in the past. They're like, oh, he's my favorite student of all time. And it's really cool to hear that. And, um, we want kids like that in our program as much as we can. We want you know to uh, to have those type of people that uh, definitely uh, embody the core values that we have of toughness, effort, attitude, and me second. And uh, you know, Chris definitely is a uh, you know uh, a, a pillar of, of what we want to build our program around. As we record this week's show on Tuesday, let's talk about tonight's road game at Green. What can you tell us about the Bulldogs? Oh, the Bulldogs are always good. Uh, they have a great coach. Coach Kinsley does a great job up there. They got a lot of guys back from last year. We played them uh, right around the holidays last year, right before Christmas. And um, we were a little bit on the dog at stretch. You know, Chris was sick, actually. That game didn't play against Green. So I know he's ready to go and get the opportunity to go tonight. Um, but they got they got some size, they got some experience, uh, and some really good quality players. So uh, tough environment to play up there on the road. Uh, our guys are excited. Uh, it's kind of like I said, going into that tough stretch of our season as we get ready for tournaments. Um, we're picking up some some federal league games and, and some tough uh, you know tough road opponents uh, coming up this week. And so we're, we're we're excited to kind of get going on that that stretch here, uh, find out a little, little bit about our team and test our young guys. Uh, you know, in some tough environments as we get ready for. Uh, that, you know, that tough tournament time, uh, games that we're going to see, you know, heading on the road possibly here in, in, in the district, hopefully, and uh, having to face some adverse situations. Then on Friday night, your team stays on the road with a game at Perry. Tell us more about this year's edition of the Panthers. Well, you know, we haven't gotten to the Perry Scout a ton yet. Coach Sitzler has been doing all of our Federal League uh, uh, opponents because uh, he came from, from Lake, and so he knows a lot of those teams. So, uh, he'll have a great scout ready for us. But I know, you know, Coach Smitty's gone over and watched Perry play. Uh, we know them pretty well. Excuse me. They, uh, they're on their third coach in three years. And so, you know, that's always tough. But, uh, you know, they're playing a very tough schedule. And uh, I anticipate that's going to be a really tough game for us on the road. Uh, last year, they were struggling a bit. And they came in here and played really well. And, uh, you know, it's a rivalry game. So we usually we get a great, great effort from them. Uh, I know they're going to get a good effort from us. And so, uh, again, another road game in the Federal League is not, you know, never easy on a Friday night. Uh, you know, we're excited to go over there. And uh, they got some kids that can play. You know, so their record definitely is misleading at times uh, to their abilities so uh, we got you know take care of business tonight and then be ready to go for Friday because it's good like I said two tough road opponents in the Federal League uh, you know getting us ready for tournament time and finally coaches all talk about how important the youth feeder programs are to their high school basketball teams what can you tell us about the youth programs here in Maslin well, I just mentioned his name, Coach Smitty. Uh, Brian Smith has done a great job establishing Ma Masson Youth Sports Association, to call it MISA. And, uh, you know, they do all of our rec league and they do all of our travel teams, uh, you know, and they do a great job of getting people involved. Uh, another coach on our staff, our freshman coach, Derek Conley, works at the Boys Club. And uh, they have another, they have a youth league up there. They run, it's just getting started up. Uh, Mice is finishing down as, as the boys club is kind of starting up. Uh, can't say enough about those levels, uh, you know, how important they are to get people involved and, and, and kids playing um, the game of basketball at a young age. And uh, just to, to get introduced to it and, and fall in love with it. I think about when I started playing, uh, you know, back in third, fourth grade, fifth, sixth grade leagues and uh, that's where my love of basketball started. And so, you know, it's, it's close to my heart because I've had my kids go through it. i got three of them in involved right now, and my other one's in the middle school, uh, which is, you know, another level, that feeder program going into uh, to the high school level. And, um, you know, it's just, it's really, I've seen, you know, it's a well-run organization, and uh, they get to see a lot of different teams. It's not just playing, you just call in-house, where you just played other Maslin teams. Uh, we got other other teams in the area, uh, Kent South, say, or like Manchester, uh, Northwest, Tussle. There's a lot of schools in the area that have teams involved, and so, you know, we're able to see some of those different teams and, and, and get development. Uh, but the biggest thing is developing the love of the game, uh, 
you know, getting kids involved, uh, introducing the game to them, and then, you know, hopefully that they can build that into, you know, staying in the game and, and, and continuing to play uh, as they grow through the, you know, different ages into our middle school program. Thanks, Coach. That will do it for this edition of the Josh Hose Show. We want to thank our season-long sponsor, Reliable Heating and Cooling. Thanks again to Coach Hose and junior guard Chris Knight for joining us this week on the show. I'm your host, Allison Dietrich. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers.